So our base position for this one is going to be a low lunge, but not quite like the deepest lunge you can get, just a lunge where one foot, one leg is in front of the other. Okay, so you're going to need a band, a heavier band than this, because this is going to be too easy for the scope of this exercise. Um, so you may want to use a black band or a purple band, and I know colors are relative or specific to the, to the brand, but reds are usually thin and yellows are even thinner. Black is usually the next step and then purple is usually the one after that, but that's not universal, but it's just common. So first thing you're going to do is wrap the band around your foot like that. Okay. Loop it around again. So you have good leverage. Okay. Take your foot, bring it behind you, flex your foot. Okay. Now I would suggest having something to prop your right hand in on. So you can use a broomstick. Actually, I, I, I bought a stick specifically for this. So lunge, stick for stability. Take your foot and pull. Actually, you may want to put the stick down for a second. And you're going to pull your leg in as far as it'll get towards your butt. Now, Notice how I don't have a ton of leverage here, um, only because the band is pretty light. I feel a stretch in my quads already, that's just because they're sore. So from here, grab your stick, then tuck your hips. When you tuck your hips, you'll feel a lot more in your back quad, and that's pretty much what we're going for, okay? So we want a passive stretch in the back quad. So while we're staying in the passive component, Keep tucking your hips. Notice if your right hip is hiked up. Pull your right hip down, okay? Even out your hips. Keep tucking. Notice if you're losing the stretch. And hold for about 60 to 90 seconds and breathe. Notice how I'm shaking a little. It's quite tough. Keep tucking, keep tucking, keep shifting the right hip down and breathe. And I'm sure you can suspect what's going to happen next. Let go of the band just a little bit. Make some room. Okay, just so you have space to push. Then push down into the band. This is why we need a tougher band. Because when you push, the band's going to extend too much. Also, too late to say this, but you might want to put something underneath your knee. I can tolerate this pain. Some may not. So I'm pushing down into the band and I'm trying to extend my knee. I'm not going to though. So I should feel my entire leg, my left glutes, everything. See how much I'm shaking? Hold that and keep pushing. And then on the three, two, one, you're gonna slowly let go of the band and pull the heel in towards the butt, okay? Slowly let go and pull the heel in towards the butt. Try not to get a hamstring cramp. I'm getting one, three, two, one, relax hamstring cramp. They're going to happen. I am using the excuse of the fact that I'm super sore from a ton of hip thrust and deadlifts and I'm so sweaty, but that's pretty much what it looks like. So to recap, a few things to remember, stick, band, something underneath the knee for comfort. If you can tolerate the pain, cool, deal with the pain. If you don't have any knee problems, cool, just hold the lunge. I do not recommend doing this on a hardwood floor. Also, you, what was I gonna say? Yeah, so to recap, from the top, 60 to 90 seconds passive, so you're pushing in, not, you're not pushing, you are, what is wrong with me today? I'm gonna keep this video because it's funny because I'm messing up a lot. Usually I refilm, but I refuse to. So, passive, 60 to 90 seconds, okay? You're just gonna pull your heel in, and you're also gonna tuck the hips. Second part, pales, progressive angular isometric loading. That's when you're going to push down into the band for, slight, I'd say, 60% effort and then work your way up to 90% effort. We are rarely at 100% without someone there to give you external feedback. And the third part is rails, in which you're going to pull the heel in towards the butt and you might get a cramp like I did. I kind of backed off when I felt the cramp coming on. It was like pre-cramp and I lived in that pre-cramp area, but I didn't back off. If you get a cramp <coughs> and it's truly debilitating and you just can't continue, 
cool, no problem, stop. But you'll have to start over, okay?